you have blinds like these, are you tired of using your arms? Me too. Good news. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how to take blinds like these and motorize and automate them. These are the goals of this project. Number one, I want to use existing blinds. I don't want to buy new blinds or new motorized shades. This is about using what I already have, but making it better. Number two, motorized raising and lowering is a must. Most of the time, when I want more light or to see the awesome view out my office window, I raise the blinds all the way up. So that's the feature that's most important to me, raising and lowering. Number three, motorized tilting for completeness. I don't tilt my blinds much, but I expect most other people do. So a video about motorizing and automating blinds wouldn't be complete if I left out tilting. And number four, reversibility. I don't expect that I will ever undo any of the smart stuff I've done in my house, but after I'm dead and gone, someone else might want to put things back the way they were. Blinds are expensive, so I want to preserve the ability for someone someday to remove what I've done and go back to using these blinds as they were, like a caveman. Here are the parts we're going to use. Number one, a geared DC motor. Sizing this motor is a little tricky. Technically, you'd need to measure the force required to pull the blinds up, then measure the radius of the spool that will wind up the string, and multiply those numbers to get the torque required of the motor. But that's kind of complicated. I've used a 10 RPM motor that provides 8.5 kilogram centimeters of torque, and it lifts the blinds, but it's very slow. I tried a 45 RPM motor that only provides 2.5 kilogram centimeters of torque, and it wasn't strong enough to lift my blinds. I even tried a 24 RPM motor that provides 4.2 kilogram centimeters of torque, but it was still too weak for my blinds. So for now, I'm stuck with the 10 RPM motor. If your blinds aren't as heavy as mine, you might be able to get away with a different motor that might lift and lower your blinds faster. Regardless, these motors cost between $10 and $15. Number two, an H-Bridge motor controller. I'm using the L298N. There are others I'm sure you could use, but this one works well and it's cheap. It can also be used for stepper motors, but we won't be using that functionality for this project. This costs about $3. Number three, a servo for tilting. I'm using a high torque servo. It's probably overkill, but it's not too expensive and it works. Cost about $5. Number four, a D1 Mini for Wi-Fi control. This is my go-to Wi-Fi board for most of my DIY smart home projects. You can get them between three and $5 depending on where you buy them and how many you buy. Number five, a DC-DC power converter. The L298N has a DC converter and outputs five volts that can be used to power the D1 Mini, but unfortunately, it doesn't provide enough current to run the servo. Don't ask me how I found that out. It's embarrassing. I'm using an adjustable buck converter with a maximum output of three amps. These go for about $2. Number six, a 12 volt three amp power supply. You might be able to get away with less but you won't really save any money by getting the one amp or two amp version. Cost, about $6. And finally, I'm using a 3D printed servo holder and gear adapter, string spool, and motor housing. I'll make the models available if you want to use them. If you don't have a 3D printer, you'll have to get creative with how you secure the motor, attach the servo to the tilt shaft, and attach the spool to the lift motor shaft. I've been considering ways to make parts like this available as kind of a DIY kit? If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments or on Discord. Let's take a minute to set up the electronics. Connect the 12 volt power supply to the L298N controller. Solder some jumper wires on the input and output side of the buck converter. Then connect the input side to the same terminals where the 12 volt power supply connects to the L298N. Connect your voltmeter to the output side and adjust the output voltage. This servo can actually take seven volts and provides more torque at that voltage than at five volts. So I'm setting mine to seven volts. 
Once you've got the desired output voltage, connect the output positive to the red wire and the negative to the brown wires from the servo. If you don't want to adjust the DC converter, you can use this one instead, but it is more expensive. It's time to program the D1 Mini. I'm going to use Home Assistant and ESP Home to control my blinds. If you're not using Home Assistant yet, it's okay. Now's a great time to start. Here's a video by 1M Tech on how to set up Home Assistant, and one by DigiBlur on how to get started with ESP Home. This is my ESP Home YAML for my office blinds. The first part is the basic setup that is created when you run the ESP Home new device wizard. Then we have to include a new service under the API section to add a control servo service in Home Assistant. There may be a day when that won't be necessary if Home Assistant adds a servo component. Next is the output section. We have three output pins. Two go to the L298N motor controller and one goes to the servo. We need switches for the L298N pins. Then a simple servo entry. These binary sensor entries are optional. The first one sets up an end stop switch that will shut off the lift motor when it's closed. If you use this, you'll want a button of some kind that will be closed when the blinds are all the way up. The other binary sensor would be for a physical control button if you wanted to include one. This will function the same way as the button on my shades video did. If the blinds are going up and the button is pressed, it will stop. If the blinds were last open and the button is pressed, it will close them. And if they were last closed, it will open them. I'm not going to use a physical button though because that would mean using my arms. I am actually using a physical button. Finally, we have two cover control entries. One that will include a delay so the blinds will stop when they're all the way up or down. If you use the end stop switch, you could remove the delay and the turn off from the open action since the end stop switch will stop the motor when the blinds reach the fully open position. Or you could leave the delay and still use the end stop. The old belt and suspenders look. The second cover entry gives you the arrows for up and down and a stop button, but without the delay. Use this to figure out how long it actually takes for your blinds to open and close. I would caution against using this method without an end stop switch. If you aren't watching and your blinds reach the fully open position and the motor binds up, it will draw a ton of current and will likely release the magic smoke. At least, that's what I've been told. With all that in your YAML, you can save and validate, deal with any errors, and compile the binary. For me, I like to download the bin and upload it onto the D1 Mini using the ESP Home Flasher, mostly because I can use the PC I'm on without moving, but connecting to my Home Assistant PC means leaving my chair. After the initial USB flash, in Home Assistant, check that your new ESP Home device is online. Then go to Configuration, Integrations, and activate the new discovered ESP Home entity that appears there. That will create the entities in Home Assistant. You only have to upload it through USB the first time. After that, updates and uploads over the air are flawless with ESP Home. Thanks again, Odo. We also have to add an input number entry in the Home Assistant configuration.yaml to make a slider for the tilt, and add an automation to have the blind tilt servo respond to a change in the input number slider. When you've added those, check the config and restart Home Assistant. Now to interact with your blinds, you'll want a new user interface card. Mine looks like this. It's not teaching birds or dino tech level, but it works. Now we can finish our electrical connections. Connect the 5 volt pin on the D1 Mini to the 5 volt output from the L298N controller and the ground to ground. Connect the servo pin to the control wire of the servo. For this servo, that's the orange wire. If you're using an end stop switch, connect one wire to the D5 pin and the other to the ground terminal. If you're using a physical push button, connect one pole of the button to D3 and the other pole to ground. Connect the D1 pin to EN1 and D2 to EN2 on the L298N. Then connect the motor to the motor terminals, 
Now you can plug in the 12 volt power supply and you should get some super bright LEDs on the motor controller and the butt converter. Time to test the motors. Try all the controls, up, down, stop, tilt. Make sure the motors are doing what you expect before you get them all installed. If something isn't working, this is the time you want to know. If they do work, then you can finish the mechanical assembly. Connect the 3D printed servo gear adapter to the round gear on the servo. Then connect them both to the servo. Put the servo in the 3D printed holder. You may want to secure the servo to the blinds housing with double sided tape or even better, a couple of screws up from the bottom. On my blinds, the servo gear lined up pretty well with the tilt shaft. Sometimes you just get lucky. Place the L298N controller, the buck converter, and the D1 Mini in the blinds channel. You'll want to cover the bottom of the boards with something to keep them from contacting the metal channel of the blinds and shorting out. Double-sided foam tape or hot glue work well. Lucky for me, my blinds have a nice wide 2 inch by 2 inch channel that has plenty of room to fit all these parts inside so I won't see any of this on the outside of my blinds. That's fantastic. If you're using an end stop switch, install that now you may be able to use the hole the old tilt lift cords went through or cut a new hole for the end stop to fit through. Slide the tilt rod back into place through the tilt barrels and squeeze on the servo adapter. And by squeeze, I mean use a hammer. Finally, place the geared motor in the housing. Feed the lift string through the spool holes and attach the spool to the motor shaft. If your blinds are exactly like mine, the motor housing will fit pretty tight. If you need to secure it to the blinds, put some short screws through the tabs. Now do another test of everything. If it passes, reinstall it in the window and you're done. It's demo time. Okay, I'm about done. So let's walk through what's going on in here because it's a lot of stuff. Oh boy, I don't even know where to start. These two cords right here are the two that pull up the blinds. This is the one that goes to that side, pulls up that side, and then the other one goes right below this barrel. So they go into this pulley, which is the old tilt mechanism pulley, and then they go around here through right on top of these guys. Then over here, they become one string. They're tied together, become one string, keep on going, and then end up on the pulley. This ended up being the 10 RPM motor even the 24 RPM motor wasn't strong enough to lift these blinds. These are pretty heavy. Power wires for the motor come back here to the controller right there. Then we've got uh, power coming off of here, 5 volts going to power the D1 Mini, that's all, and ground coming from here to the D1 Mini. This is where the main power wires are coming in. This is the 12 volt wires from the power supply going into uh, ground and 12 volts on the big motor controller. They go here and then out that hole over there. Uh, then we've got uh, the input sides of this DC-DC uh, converter, buck converter. It's got eight, uh, 12 volts going in this side and 7 volts coming out this side. And that 7 volts, those two wires go to the servo right here. 7 volts and ground. And then this is the control signal or the, the uh, data signal that goes to the D1 Mini right here. Uh, this pin, this D1 mini wire, goes to the end stop switch along with a ground wire. This red one here, if you want, there's a light on the end stop switch if you wanted it to light up when it was stopped. I didn't want it to light up. I tested it and just didn't see a need for it. So I don't run a, I, I'm not running a wire here, but you could run 3 volts or 5 volts there. This is what I ended up doing with the end stop switch. I'm actually pretty happy with it. This was kind of tricky. I thought I'd put it down at the end and kind of messed with how I could do it. What I ended up doing was, uh, you know, bending these terminals, uh, bending these connectors that go to the actual switch and then just hot gluing this thing facing down through a hole that I kind of drilled and chewed uh, through the sheet metal here. But it's, I think that's actually going to be great. So when this hits that, it'll stop the blinds. I think that's actually going to work pretty well, hopefully. All right, so that's that, this here. Oh, I, I went ahead. I wasn't sure about a bottom end stop switch or a control button, a physical control button. In order to at least give myself the option, what I've done is taken an old phone 
cord here. This is just four wires for an old telephone cord because uh, it's nice and long and cheap since it's free. Uh, and I took the yellow wire and I put it to a pin that I will make an end stop switch, uh, an end stop for the bottom of, this, of the blinds. This is more of an example of if you want it. I'm not sure I'll use it, but I'll have it just in case. And then this red one will go to a different pin and this will go to the pin for the physical push button, the one that you push and the blinds move in whatever direction they weren't in and then you push it again they stop and you push it again and they move in the, in the other direction and that wire runs all the way down and out the other side I think that's about it there's a lot of stuff that concerns me here mostly this cord I don't like that it's sitting on top of those things I don't like that it has to come in contact with so many things along the path so there's probably a better way to do that so you can see here it has to kind of take a turn and so it rubs a little bit on that so I don't like that very much oh this the servo I forgot to show you the servo connection here the servo is connected to this to this post I had to shorten this quite a bit but it's still long enough that if somebody wanted to put this back to being uh, the old-fashioned way like a caveman they could because I cut it so that it would still fit uh, into the pulley and into all the barrels just barely so it would turn all the barrels if it if you needed it to and then the servo is here and I screwed the, the holder down so the servo doesn't move. The motor box is also screwed to the casing here. And then this has this balance piece that goes on here so it'll hide pretty much everything that sticks out. You probably, I mean, you'll see this from the bottom, but you won't see it from the front. And you won't see the screws for the, for the motor. And these wires will all kind of be crunched in the top. So I think I'm ready to install it. Pretty good. A couple things I want to fix. It's pretty slow. I tried different motors. I'm not sure. We'll have to do some thinking about how to make it faster. It's also noisy, and I don't just mean the motor noise. There's a squeaking, probably from the string rubbing against the plastic parts. So maybe some way to decrease the friction that the string is experiencing. So I don't know if that means maybe put the string inside of a little tube. I know that my string, I had to add a bit of string, which meant another knot. So the knots, you can see sometimes the knots get hung up a little bit. So I'd say it's 95% what I wanted. So I'm happy enough, but definitely uh, need to work on version two. This is great, happy with it, but it needs to get better. If you like this video and want to see more like it, I try and put these out as often as I can, which has turned out to be about once a month. But I also do live streams every week on Sunday, and then sometimes during the week when I can squeeze in the time. If you like this kind of project and you want to chat with me or other people that also like these projects, come join us on Discord or Facebook. And be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you'll get a notification whenever I start a live stream or upload a new video. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.